Hello and welcome back to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In our prior two videos, we learned how to do periodic FIFO and periodic LIFO. So we have one more periodic inventory valuation method that we want to go over, which is average cost. Now average cost, unlike FIFO and LIFO, we are going to be using a formula for this case. So again, just as a quick little reiteration, we have some information up here that tells us our beginning inventory and our purchases. So we start with six units at 5, 100 at 6, so on and so forth. And we also have some inf inf information down here that tells us how many units were on hand at the end of the year. So of these units, only 50 remained at the end of the year, which means that the rest of those were sold. So for our average cost method, we are going to employ this formula. Total costs divided by total units equals average cost. So in order to find our total cost, try pausing the video and think, how would you find the total cost of all of these units? In order to do this, we have to take each layer and multiply across and add them up. So the total cost for the first layer is going to be $60, 60 units times $5 each. And for the second layer, that would be 100 units at $6 each. So as you can see, we're finding the total cost for each individual layer. Now to find the total for all four layers, we simply have to add those up. So once we add those up, we find that our total cost is 1,570. So now we need our total units. So our total units is going to be very similar. We have 60, 150, and 30 units. So if we add those up, you will see that we have 240 units. So let's go ahead and plug in those 240 units. And now in order to find our average cost, we simply employ this formula. Total cost divided by total units gives us roughly $6.54. Now, if you do see these problems, typically your software or your instructor is going to want you to round this intermediate calculation to the nearest cent. So let's go ahead and round that to the nearest cent. $6.54 per unit. That is the average cost. It actually finds that weighted average for us. So now let's apply this. Let's start with ending inventory. We know that we have 50 units in ending inventory, but what was the cost of those 50 units? How much did we pay? Well, under the average cost method, we use the average cost that we just calculated. So the average cost of all of our units is $6.54. So we are going to use that to find our ending inventory. 50 units times $6.54. That gives us $327. Now we're going to do the same thing for cost of goods sold. However, we have to do a little bit of math. If we had 240 units available for sale and only 50 units are on hand at the end of the period, how many units did we sell? Well, 240 available for sale minus the 50 that we still have and did not sell will give us 190 sold units. Now, we have to plug in that average cost. Remember, our average cost isn't going to change whether they were sold or an ending inventory for this method. Regardless, the average is still $6.54. So let's go ahead and plug that in, and let's do our final math. 190 units at $6.54 each gives us 1,243 units. Now, just like we did with those other methods, let's go ahead and check our math a little bit just to make sure we didn't forget anything. And remember, this is not a guaranteed method of checking, but it is kind of something to let you see if you didn't make a little blunder or error somewhere. So as you can see, we have 240 total units. I'm just using this down here as a calculation bar. So 240, that matches up. Now let's take a look at our cost of goods sold now. So that's 1,243 plus 327. And here we're noticing that it's a perfect 1,570. However, just to make sure, let's go ahead and bring out our calculations a bit. If we bring that out and we stop rounding it, notice that there are some extra little numbers going on here. It's not exactly perfect, is it? So let's go ahead and redo that one. This plus this, there we go. So here we see that when we actually make, and we don't round to the nearest dollar, because typically when we do this, we only want to round to the nearest cent. Always pay attention to your instructions, this can change. So 190 units times $6.54, 
If we do that math in our calculator, it's going to give us $1,242.60. And if we take 50 units and we multiply that by $6.54, plug that into our calculator, we're going to find an even $327. So if we add these two up, we get $1,569.60. And why is that? Why is it not equal to this? That is simply because this number right here, we had rounded that a little bit. So that additional 1,7 that we're cutting off and actually keeps going. Let me go ahead and show that. It actually keeps going indefinitely. It's 1,66666. So since that 6 bar is there, there is a little bit of a discrepancy here. So pay attention to the instructions. See what your instructor wants you to do. A lot of these examples that they provide you in your textbook, they are going to be nice, easy, clean numbers. However, that does not always happen. So whenever you see this, my best advice would be to round it to the nearest cent as well as over here, round to the nearest cent. But always be careful just in case. Look at your instructions and follow what your instructor wants you to do. So that's it for the average cost method for periodic. Um, other than that, eventually we are going to be getting into Perpetual, which we're not going to be uploading right away, so please be sure to subscribe so that you get an alert when that video does come up. And in the meantime, make sure to study these as much as possible, and as always, happy studying.